When I first started my photography journey, one of the biggest challenges was how to edit my photos for them to have a more moody, more cinematic and generally more pleasing look to them. At the very beginning, I remember that I was using only the iPhone editing tools that are inside of the photo app. And that was like six years ago. Then, once I got my first DSLR, I started to learn Lightroom from scratch. Ever since I started using Lightroom, I also learned about presets and that they could be purchased online because so many creators were selling them. I never bought them though because I was determined to learn how to give a certain look to a photo without getting it ready from someone else, but do it manually. And I'm glad I did actually, because with time I started learning how to edit photos better and better, and I kept improving on it. And then I also introduced a lot of more advanced tools like color grading and the tone curve, which in the beginning I completely ignored because I couldn't understand them. Uh, they were too complicated for me, unlike the sliders, which you just move left and right, and they're quite straightforward. But anyways, skip forward one and a half years, and my biggest leap forward when it comes to improving my uh, editing skills and my finished products was when I started to introduce the Lightroom's built-in presets into my photos. Now, I have no idea for how long these presets have actually been there, because I tried some of them in the beginning and I got some pretty bad results with my photos, but as I said, because I started to first learn manually how to use different sliders, then I could see when I was using one of these presets that I only need to tweak one little slider, for example, the saturation of a single color to make the photo from a terrible one to a complete edit and a photo that I could probably post online. And I can really say that they improved my workflow a lot and my photos because I have been getting feedback even from my friends in person who follow my work on Instagram and they have told me that I've come a long way and that I have improved a lot, especially after starting introducing these presets. And that's why I wanted to make this video today so that you don't have to look around for years or even waste money on presets online before you realize like I did that these presets have always been there and they could actually help you get pretty much any look that you want for your photos. Of course, I also have to say that there is nothing wrong with buying presets online. In fact, it's actually a great way to support your favorite creators uh, while you're learning from them. But that's not the point of this video at all. The point of this video is simply to help you get more out of the apps that are already in your computer and that you're already using. By the way, if this is your first time on this channel, my name is Julian Skurani. I'm a photographer and a videographer based in Vienna. I make content like vlogs, gear reviews, tutorials and travel videos. So if you're into that kind of stuff, consider subscribing. With that out of the way, let's jump right into Lightroom Classic and let me show you on some examples which presets I'm exactly talking about and also how they helped me edit my photos in a really dope way, which I really love. <sighs> let's go. So now we are in Lightroom Classic. I have picked some photos here and these are also some uh, other examples from Lightroom because you get the same presets in Lightroom Classic, in Lightroom and also in Lightroom Mobile. So that's the first one, let's make it full screen. This one with the tram is one of my favorites. Taking it from a photo that looks super basic, very digital and make it very moody and cinematic. Love that one. Also some photos in the club. It also makes a huge difference. Another one. <laughs> this one is also one of my favorites because I literally made this with my iPhone. And that's what it looks like before. And that's what I made it look like. Crazy. Some product photography, bread from a bakery. That's what it looks like before because the whole place there is so warm and the lights are so warm. And with the help of these presets, I made it look like this. This looks like you really want to eat it from the screen. And that's it, that was it. All right, cool. Now let's pick two of these photos. I'll take some from Lightroom Classic because those are the ones uh, whose edits I actually noted on my notebook so that I can show you exactly what I did. Uh, the first one, all right, let's go with this coffee because I actually like this a lot. So we start from this. The, this is our first photo. Now what do we do? Go to the left here where it says presets. And for this particular one I used Cinematic 8. This is actually one that I, uh, one preset that I use a lot. So we go down, style, cinematic and 8. Also you can go through these other ones if you have some other presets which will work better for your style or for your particular case of photography. You can go through all of them. I really like many of them. But for now, let's go with the one that I chose, so Cinematic 8, 
this was the first edit and you can see that it already looks a lot better from this to this it's already a big difference the second thing i did was to bring the temperature to 4632 makes it a bit cold the whole thing the third thing is to increase the in exposure just a little bit 0 0.09 then we go to highlights and bring them down to minus 28 the next thing is the shadows plus 46 then we go to the whites and bring them down to minus 52 that's already dialed here and blacks minus 61 all right now as you can see it looks the coffee looks really dark so you can't really see much and that's why the next thing we want to do and with many of these photos i actually use masks because that's a great way to direct the light where you want it if you don't have a light on set to put it to brighten the subject then you can use this mask to a certain degree to create the same same effect for example the subject you can make brighter and the rest darker and what i did here was just go to masking and I chose a radial gradient because I want this whole uh, place to be a bit better lit. Let's drag this nice and wide, bring it a bit to the center and now just increase the exposure. I didn't note this change here so I don't know how, how much I did it when I showed it before but I'm doing it right now and we'll see how it goes. All right, so I just brought the exposure a bit up and then the highlights down. And, it all, and you can already see, already see that it looks a lot better. What you can try is also this linear gradient. Maybe, I don't know, that could make the photo a bit too dark, but I'll try it anyways. To put the brightness on the bottom of the photo a bit low, so that you, the eye is guided away from there and somewhere towards the center where it also finds the coffee. So let's bring it down a little bit. All right, yeah, that's worked like that so let me show you again what it was like before like this quite basic and we come to this love it let me show you another one i'll pick this photo because pretty much all the other ones are shot in raw so you have a lot of space to move there but this one was taken from my drone my mini 2 and it doesn't have raw so we're gonna have to work with the jpeg but you can still see for example the difference here is huge going from a photo that looks like this which it's not bad actually, even the original photo is not bad, it's just not very moody, it looks quite digital in my opinion. So from this we'll go to this and <laughs> you can see many masks used on this one. Alright, so let's reset and start from scratch. What I want to do here is, is first of all crop this into an Instagram postable aspect ratio, it's 4x5, now it's the other way around. So you have to press X on the keyboard to change the sides and then, now we are at 4x5, perfect for Instagram. Let's go to the edit. For this one I used, let me see, Cinematic 9. <clears throat> so we are still here. The cinematics are some presets that I used a lot. And in this case we chose not the 8, but the 9. Uh, the next thing I did was the exposure, 0 0.09, also a little more. And then the highlights, plus 30. The shadows plus 30, remove the contrast a little bit. Then we go down to effects and on vignetting we go to minus 18 to make the edges a bit dark, like that. So that it directs the viewer's eye towards the center, towards the church. Another thing that I've noted here is color grading, that I changed a little bit of that, but I don't, I didn't note exactly which what I changed from it, but anyways, let's get there. So around here, actually, it looks pretty nice. Maybe I have to lower the saturation a little bit. Yeah, before it was a bit too greenish and now we made it a bit, introduced a bit of purple into this photo. So now we're also done with color grading and the next step was, of course, masking. So what I'll do here is just add some linear gradients from four sides like that to direct the eye even more towards the church so i'm just gonna go with the exposure a little down make sure not to make that a lot because you don't want it to be noticed you just want it to feel natural all right so now you can see what it was like before the masking and after so it really makes the whole scene look more three-dimensional it brings out the subject in the middle and it also directs the eye towards the middle 
So there we go, that was it. We went from this to this. To me that's like revolutionary because I didn't know about these presets before but anyways you can play around with them. You have for each category different presets. In the beginning you might, it might happen that you don't know the presets where they are and you might use some which don't work but just as an advice go to them for example 8 and 9 that we have for this one and even play with the amount a little bit because it might be too much or too little and then try to experiment with many of them because many of them give different looks and a lot of them are actually really good. So that was it. If you follow me on Instagram then and you have wondered how I uh, edit my photos to look the way I do then I hope this tutorial helped you a little bit. Leave a comment down below if you liked my edits and if this taught you something new. Uh, also, if you post your photos on Instagram, make sure to tag me on them. As always, I hope I could help you with these tips. I look forward to seeing your work. Make sure to leave a like on this video, subscribe to the channel, so that you don't miss any kind of these videos in the future. Peace!